All right, let's dive in. I know that Ian is having a little bit of connectivity issues, so let's talk with Ian first. Ian in North Carolina calling about the B theory of time as a defeater to the Kalam cosmological argument. Welcome, Ooh. Ian. Hey, <clears throat> thank you for taking my call. Uh, Long time listener, first time caller. Yay! Uh, Yay. But I, I, so I've heard V discuss this before, and I know that they had expressed an interest of diving a little deeper. I don't know if you had any chance to do any research. Um, my research, I don't know, I guess maybe has already been um, related to just a brief kind of wiki look and then thinking, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. as we will do. As one does. Um, so um, I know that you had mentioned, um, I don't, should we clarify B theory of time for people that aren't A and B yeah. theory of time? For I people think that would aren't. be really, really helpful. Ian, yeah. do you want to give it a shot? Uh, let me try, and then if you can, you can uh, edit as you see. <laughs> Sounds for good. A deeper conversation. <clears throat> um, so A theory of time um, basically posits a single direction, time being um, unidirectional, uh, starting at a c conceivably a beginning, a zero point, and progressing forward in time, and um, that that theory posits that basically only the now exists for one thing mm -hmm. um but that so the past has happened but can't be changed in the future hasn't happened and can't be interacted with until we get there mm -hmm. um and so um that's been kind of just the the thought you know we've all we know that um that the time has been posited as a fourth dimension if you were looking at a Cartesian coordinate system, right. with it being perpendicular to the other three as well. Um, and so what in my understanding of the B theory of time is that as the physicists look at it, time doesn't happen that way. Time happens, um, it doesn't matter which direction you work the equation, you can uh, derive velocity of an object or you can derive its velocity in the past because you can work backwards sure. through time. Mm -hmm. So in the physics sense of the word, time doesn't have a direction. Time is simply another um, another coordinate on the system. Right. That would be like um, saying that the, the dimension of space only has forward, right? You can only move forward right. across an, uh, a, a plane. And while that's one direction you could go, and we are most accustomed to thinking about things being moved forward, um, that doesn't negate the fact that there is a backwards and a sideways. <laughs> um, so I just wanna uh, give my understanding super, super fast. It's going to kind of condense yeah. a lot of what you've said, Ian. I think you're, you're, you're accurate as far as I know. Um, essentially, you guys, a theory of time has the concept of irreducible tensed facts. So that essentially means that the difference between past, present, and future are built into the nature of time itself. So past is a thing, present is a thing, future is a thing within the construct of time. The B theory of time says that there are no irreducible tensed facts about the concept of time, rather past, present, and future is a matter of our temporal perspective. So that would be like saying, instead of uh, the directions being north, south, east, and west, which are kind of baked in, it would be left, right, in front of me and behind me, right? We're talking about how we are kind of situated in time and using things like past, present, and future as temporal kind of perspectives as opposed to references of specific points along a an axis um anybody in the comments the chat i'm willing to be corrected on any of that but that's kind of the the basics as far as i understand them okay okay and, I, and i'll agree with that but i've got one little pushback if you don't mind mm -hmm. um that um uh, the analogy used of uh, forward reverse left right yeah. Um, and center of a way to look at it. Um, I, um, my understanding of this would um, be that time only has uh, it's it's a single axis on the um, on the on the co coordinate system. Whereas when you talk about forward and reverse, left and right, that's two axes. 
So I don't believe fair, time has, fair. as far as we know, two axes. So that's why, because, so this is where we get into the Kalam, I guess, if, we, yeah. if we're ready to <clears throat> make the jump. Yeah, let's let's so let's kind of set the groundwork for it because people are probably wondering why is this skeptic show specifically talking about the A and B theories of time. Um, I can set that up if you'd like. Yeah, yeah um, that'd be great. <clears throat> sure. So the Kalam cosmological argument is an apologetic for the existence of God. Um, we start with the cosmological argument, <clears throat> which says that uh, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Um, the universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. That is the classic cosmological argument, and then you have the Kalam cosmolog cosmological argument. Um, and that's actually not... Or sorry, that's the Kalam cosmological yes. argument. Um, we're now moving into William Lane Craig's version of the Kalam cosmological argument, which says that in order for something to create the universe, it needs to have a bunch of properties that, that includes timeless, spaceless... Um, Personal. What is it? Personal, yeah. uh, um, all, all powerful, um, all that good stuff. But and so. I feel like that is like, we're, I think we should <coughs> shelve that part for now because that is yeah, I agree. addition to this is specifically talking about the concept of the universe beginning to exist or, in fact, things beginning to exist in the first place. Okay. So my mind immediately goes to timeless. Um, I'm sure that that will factor in, but, so, but I think if, that if, this is. Not to me. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so Ian, what are what are your thoughts in terms of how it how it might defeat the Kalam? Well, so I know that the the, the idea, I, and I what I'm positing is that I don't necessarily think it does defeat the Kalam. Okay. Um, I think that it, it it's very tempting to make it defeat the Kalam. Um, however, uh, because of the fact that. Um, since time can move, and that B theory could move either direction, or you could look at it through either direction, and and you could consider all of the points on that coordinate system to um, kind of be uh, simultaneously existent. Mm -hmm. um, so then, therefore, you, there's this concept that there's no beginning. Right. Um, but I would posit that um, uh, we have, even though we can't, we're not going to be able to specify it. We can, in our current insta instanti instantiation of the universe, the one that we can lay eyes on, mm -hmm. we can see that there was at some point a a zero point on all of the um, the three dimensional axes, and we are at some point on the positive end of the time axis. Okay. Axis. That does not mean that there's not a zero in a coordinate system. Um, it, there being a zero, that could conceivably be the point that someone could latch onto for a Kalam. Sure, that's, say, yeah. Well, we ha even though there even though there are negative numbers on the timeline, they're beyond unless we take zero point on the timeline to be mm -hmm. the present. Right. So I think um, that I, I, I see where you're coming from 100%. Um, and that zero point that we are we have seen in other um, dimensions could be used as that mm -hmm. beginning. The problem that I have with the Kalam and how it treats the concept of time is less about what we have seen in scientific observation because the Kalam came before that, right? Um, what the Kalam is essentially saying is we understand through our experience of other things that things that begin to exist have a cause. So what it is saying in that first uh, premise is it is using the, uh, for lack of a better term, temporal perspective that we have mm -hmm. as proof that something else happened objectively outside of our temporal perspective. And I think for me, Talking about the A theory and B theory of time really crystallizes the fact that that is a problem, right? If we have a even a possibility of being stuck in this B theory of time where we can perceive past, present, and future, but that is purely from our perspective and not an objective, irreducible thing, then we cannot make a claim that because A, therefore B, uh, if that B is then going to talk about something outside of our temporal perspective, uh, like an objective beginning of something. Does that make any sense? 
Yeah, I get you. Um, and I would, I would um, say perhaps that God lives in the negative um, of the time stream. <laughs> Ooh, I like that phrase. God lives um, in the negative. Because that would because that is it's outside of our own temporal perceptions because we are limited through the kind of creatures that we are that we kind of we interact with time in an a theory existence with our we have biological functions. We that's the way we experience things. We have memories, we have um uh, dreams and hopes. Um, right. So we're locked inside of that, but if something could perceive on the other side of the other side of that, then it could conceptually cause effects before the existence of our current instantiation. And I agree with you. I think that that is a possibility. It is a conceptually there. Um, But then we just come down to, okay, well, can we prove it? Is this an unfalsifiable claim at this point? In which case the argument piece of the Kalam cosmological argument, that structure is not no longer helpful. So I definitely see right. where you're coming from, but the issue would then oh, just I get, be I get, where, where so is I, it I, then? Okay, I, I see what you're saying there. I guess I, yeah. that was one of the things that I I think I puzzle I was missing in your argument is that by it becoming pure conjecture, it's no longer an argument. Right. Exactly. Okay. I'll I buy that. Yeah. I have so many questions. <laughs> uh, like. All I have is my own ignorance here. And so my my thoughts here kind of go I I'm give me just a second to look at, to gaze at my navel and then I promise we can go on to the next call but I have to ask. Yeah. Um so it's making me think of like absolute zero, right? As far as temperature right. is concerned. Um we can see what temperature it is outside and we can understand what it would be like if it was 10 degrees hotter or 10 degrees colder. Um, and so we could look down, you know, how cold things can get. But when we're talking about absolute zero to say that, you know, well, I can imagine things being colder compared to now. So I must be able to think of things being colder compared to absolute zero, you know, so what is past that? I don't know if it goes that way. You know, I, 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 I can absolutely imagine things having a stopping point. So I don't know if that would be a defeater for me when thinking about Mm. it, you know, if I'm thinking about a rock that rolls down a hill, I'm imagining at any point down that down, you know, of that rock rolling down the hill, I can go forward in time, the rock is further down the hill, I can go back in time, the rock is further up the hill. But if I get all the way to the point where the rock is at the top of the hill, and I go, Oh, but no, I can go further back in time, the rock is even further up in space, it's, you know, it's kind of postulating something beyond the point at which it's taken effect, you know, um, Mm-hmm. And so because of that, I just, I'm, I'm not sure. I feel like we're taking concepts like that and we might be loading them up with baggage that we need to unpack first. And I'm purely speculating and I'm purely pointing out where my ignorance is and where I would need to unpack it. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else? Well, no, I appreciate your time. I just thought I would call it. I've been knocking around in my head and saying it to t- talking to other people about it and stretching their brains with it as well. So it's, it's, it's fun. Been, uh, yeah, this was yeah, a it's great a fun conversation. Experiment, but like you said, it's just uh, it's like you say, it's co- just conjecture as far as we can concern. So it doesn't have any um, predictive powers that we can utilize. And um, just because it's fresh in my mind. I've been doing this a lot, but people have to realize that I've been doing work for Holy Kool-Aid for a while. Um, the, he's going to be putting out a video, I think today or tomorrow, that specifically goes over possible alternatives to the beginning. And so, you know, what what people oh. what people assume, you know, oh, well, God had to create it. Well, here are a bunch of other possibilities that could be equally likely. And um, I had a lot of fun animating it. So keep your eyes peeled to Holy Kool-Aid because that video is going to be coming out like today, I think. Nice. Yeah. I'll go watch it when it shows up. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. You guys have a good day. You You as well. Bye. I love those kinds of calls. (laughs) That was awesome. That was so much fun. People complain they they accuse us of navel gazing. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, that's what 
a lot of it is. I mean, there are real life impacts to a lot of things we talk about, but often in order to, to better understand the, you know, the, the boots on the ground concepts, you need to get abstract. And that's where we thrive. We absolutely love that. So also, we just want to model what a conversation will look like between people who might not have thought about the same thing in the same way. Ian uh, called in. He uh, was an atheist. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, we had different perspectives on it and challenged each other and came out like, oh, well, that's a good point. What about this? So yeah. this, this ability to have these conversations, I think, is really important. And I hung a lantern on my ignorance and neither of you looked down on me and went, oh, Eric, I can't believe it. No, you went, hey, that's, let's, you know, I, I, obviously, if we had the time, w that would be something we would explore together. And hopefully that's something people will take forward. Yeah.